Hey, Justin Baldoni here. Just wanted to let you know that my next book, Boys Will Be Human, a get real gut check to becoming the strongest, kindest, bravest person you can be, is available for pre-order right now. You can go to boyswillbehuman.com. That's boyswillbehuman.com. It comes out October 4th. And I am so proud of this book. It's a book that I desperately needed when I was in middle school and high school. So if you know a boy that is between 11 and 100, I promise you this book is for them. That's boyswillbehuman.com. Coming up on Man Enough. By being so afraid to speak, by being so afraid to be truthful, even within a community of activists, they don't feel connected. A lot of it comes from this like fear of being canceled, fear of saying the wrong thing, being not, being called excluded. out publicly, being excluded, rejected. rejected. Right? Being man enough, what does that mean? It's really manly to mess up, admit you're wrong, and then grow. I couldn't accept that I was evil. So maybe I'm broken, but those broken things could be corrected. Intimacy between a father and a son is me just wanting to like put my head in your lap. I love you, son. You haven't called me a benevolent sexist, but my experience is women are better. Even if it's a positive, it's still not equality. I don't blame men for that. I just blame the system. This is Man Enough. Hello, and welcome to season Two. We made it to a season two. Wow. Of Who Man would Enough. Have known? <laughs> <laughs> and all of us made it back. I thought for sure that I wouldn't be here in season two. I thought they would get rid of me quick. Um, I just didn't know if you would you were able to handle being on season two. You you're you've been so busy. I have been busy. You, but but um, well, I'm also gonna be a grandpa, which we you know, yes. that's coming real. By the way, what I what I love is he's like, I don't know if they would have me back, but he's you are they. the Well, designer. you are the they too, and then we are the they, and then who knows? We are the and that they. they actually could be the public, right? Because we have that's been true. talking about a lot of things this last year mm-hmm. that um many people love what we're doing. They're the people that challenge us. Yeah. Um, that don't like everything that I say or you or Justin. Um, so, you know, you never know when you're going to be canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> apparently we're not canceled. So. Yet. yet. It's always a yet. Something that uh, Jamie does in a lot of our meetings that I love uh, is a quick check-in. And, and to our audience who's listening right now, I'd love for you to think about your answer to this question. Liz, what brings you joy? I have like the most basic answer. I my my, my first. I think your first answer is always like the best yeah. answer, and it's just family. Like it's just like when you said, "What brings me joy?" Just my family comes to mind, mm. and it's just light and mm. beauty. Mm. Um, but it's basic, but it's true. Now, can I follow up with that real quick? Yeah, because I love that. Thank you for that. If you had to leave out your family, uh, the things that oftentimes um, many people say as a. Um, not you, I know you mean it, mm-hmm. but yeah. kind of as the obvious and maybe safe one. If you just, anything, just doesn't matter how small or grand, aside from your family mm-hmm. and the ones in your life, what brings you joy? Wow, that's such a good question. Anything, it could be anything. Just, yeah. If we could snap our fingers right now uh-huh. and all of this would go away, I know you're sad. <laughs> not not because you're canceled, Liz Plank, not because you've been canceled, but it just goes away. <laughs> Yeah. What would you do yeah. to bring yourself joy? I mean, what I wanted to do before, I worked at a community center for people with disabilities and that was so great. And, and I wanted to make a, like a secondhand store that was run by people with disabilities and I would just be I love there that. to, yeah. Mm. And that, that would bring me like so much joy. So you'd be okay just doing that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you got it, that's it, that's your answer. What about you, what brings you joy? Two things. Golf. I can golf every day, every morning. I did not know that's, that about that's, you. That is my joy right there. He's a really, I, he, I, go, I do it at 5 he, in the morning. I'm done by 8. pisses me off. You wake up at 5 a.m. to go to golf. 4.30. Be there that's, by how right. you, that's how you know you love something. He. Wow. I'll be, I'll, we'll call him at like 8 or something, and he's on that golf course. I'm yeah. Like, what? Towards what? the end of my round. It doesn't even matter if he goes to sleep at 2 in the morning. <laughs> he will still what? wake up. At, that's, that brings me joy. And then the other thing bringing my joy is, um, you know, my wife and I bought a house several months ago, and there's all these amazing things with the house, but then there's a few things that are breaking. You know, like you get it, gets past inspection. Sure. And you're like, I got to fix this. But you know what? It's been bringing me joy, though, because oh. I get to fix it. It's mine. Oh. You know, I get to go under the house with the people and, and fix the pipe or whatever yeah. it may be. And that's been really joyful to me, too, oh, for me. Things. How about you, Jay? Me thinking of Jamie trying to fix a pipe is bringing me joy. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix a pipe now. I'm sure you can. I got a hammer. Wow. Um, you know what brings me joy? 
first thing that comes to my mind uh, because we're, we're taking the family we're taking my kids and emily i mean that's just a, that's a Forgiven. no brainer yeah um i love cooking for people you do i you love do. i love cooking i love tr inventing things it feels like movie making to me wow like it's the same ingredient yeah. for me it's like you put these things together and you try to create an experience and then you give it to the person and you de you're detached but you hope that they like it mm. and uh and I, yeah, I enjoy cooking. So sometimes I think about, oh, if this all went away, mm. I would be okay, like opening a restaurant and some random place. And you do it well so too. Good. So to our wonderful listener, you. Uh, it brings you joy. Ask yourself the same question. Mm. What is the thing that's stopping you from maybe feeling or experiencing your joy? Where does that live in your body? Do you feel like you have to qualify it? Um, because I know I've been there. I've been there a lot and mm. that can be a result sometimes of even our hustle culture, this okay. mentality that if we're not being productive, we don't have value, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. I would assign to this patriarchal system, to the P word, right? Yep. To this idea that our, our productivity is our value. If we're not being productive, we don't have value in our society. Mm -hmm. And that I believe is making, making us sick. Yeah. And sometimes doing nothing is the best thing we could ever do. It really is. You're listening to the Mad Enough Podcast. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, it's Jamie Heath from the Man Enough Podcast. You know, with the weather heating up here in Los Angeles, and I imagine wherever you are too, we are all looking for ways to have a good time and escape the heat. So Chime is here to help our listeners do just that. Like a cool breeze on a hot summer day, Chime is a refreshing way to handle your money. With no monthly fees, no maintenance fees, or minimum balance fees, it's how banking should be. Send money to anyone, anywhere, fee-free. Get Chime today and start banking with ease. And when you need to access your money, you can do so, again, fee-free, at more than 60,000 in-network ATMs at many locations like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and CVS. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime. Fee-free for you and no cash-out fees for them. Chime. No monthly fees. No vibe-killing fees. Sign up for a Chime checking account only takes two minutes and it doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash man enough. That's C-H-I-M-E dot com slash man enough. Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank N.A. members FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees apply except at MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Other fees, such as third-party and cash deposit fees, may apply. Thanks to Chime for supporting the show. All right, welcome back to the Mad Enough Podcast. I think that everybody in the world ultimately wants to just experience joy. Yeah. And then we get caught up, so like we have these disagreements and about you're wrong about this, I'm right about that, and all these things. But it's really, you wake up in the day and you just, you wanna have joy, whatever it is mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we forget that maybe. So maybe just the simple reminder of what the simple things are. Yeah that bring us joy. Maybe we find some commonality in that before we find our differences. And then we can discuss some of the other things, but yeah. what is it that we agree on? What do we yeah. have in common with, as it pertains to joy? Which is a great segue into the season. Yeah. Look, we heard your feedback, audience, and uh, we are gonna start having some random episodes with just the three of us, mm -hmm. where there isn't a guest, there isn't a celebrity, there isn't a, an expert outside of the three of us. We're all here for a reason. So this first episode is no guest. We're the guests. We're just gonna talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like we are right now, <laughs> <laughs> with a little bit more um, um, a topic, and you know that we'll tackle maybe. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny you bring that up. I kept waking up last night. I was having these dreams, um, and there was so much fear in my dream because I kept waking up as if I said the wrong thing, uh, and I kept feeling like there was going to be a consequence uh -huh. that could hurt not just myself but my family. Our amazing, our amazing crew here, the people that work for my company. It's just this feeling of like, oh, if I say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And I found it really interesting that that happened last night before our first episode today, because one of the things that we've been talking a lot about as a group is where our freedom lies in being able to express opinions and thoughts and ideas that may be counter to what is popular, and I've been, I've been a little worried, honestly. I've been a little worried about 
in a little <laughs> at America. I mean, who's not, who's not right now? <laughs> um, but but one of the trends that I've been noticing is, and let me just as a qualifier say, I'm not a liberal. <laughs> I'm not a conservative, right? So uh, as a Baha'i, I don't I don't align with a political party. I've been put in this category of oh, you're a woke liberal leftist, blah blah blah, all these things. Mm-hmm. And that, I'm fine with that. People can think whatever they want about me. I'm not going to try to change anybody's mind. But what I've noticed is that there's a lot of people that are very publicly progressive and left, just like, you know, the first to put the Black Lives Matter in their Instagram handle or whatever the topical news thing. I've noticed that there's a lot of conversations around those people not feeling free to say what they actually think. And, and, I've, and I've been noticing this for a while. I don't believe that activism should be performative. I don't believe that we should be having conversations unless we actually believe in the conversation um, and hoping that we're moving the needle. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried that we're getting to a place where the the people that identify with the party on the left are literally going to eat themselves because I'm seeing people afraid of being quote unquote canceled by their own people. But I found it very interesting because I know I've had fears of, oh, shit, if I don't say this or if I say the wrong thing, mm-hmm. then is our show going to get canceled? And there's even a belief, and I believe the left, that cancel culture doesn't exist, mm-hmm. that it's, they call it accountability culture, and it's just all made up by the right. And I'm just seeing such a freaking divide, and it hurts my heart because I have people in my own family that have political ideological differences, but I love them. Every faith, every religion in the history of the world teaches us to love. You don't have to like everybody, but you have to love them. How can we ever have unity if we can't love each other? And I think that's the core of what this podcast is, was supposed to be about, what this work, Undefining Masculinity for the Love of Men, is supposed to be about. It's about love. Mm-hmm. It's about learning how to like see each other past our differences, being able to have conversations without yelling at each other and cursing at each other and saying like, you're wrong and I hate you and you have, you know, all of these things. There's no room for conversation anymore. What, I don't know. What do you think? Am I, <laughs> I what mean, are your thoughts? Am you know, I, am I off? No, I mean, what's interesting is that, I mean, this episode kind of came out of a conversation. I mean, we were supposed to have a editorial meeting uh, about what this season would be about. And we ended up kind of talking about this, right? We realized like, instead of just having this conversation in, in private, let's have it in public, which is kind of what we do here. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like uh, you know, I mean. and I think there are so many parallels with what's happening politically to what's happening, I think, on a personal level for people. I think progressives are so distraught with what's happening and rightfully so. I mean, the things that have happened over the last few years are, are you know, we, we've now, I think there was a tweet of like, can something be precedented? Like, can one day not be an unprecedented action or sort of event that happens? I feel like it's, a per- you know, when a person is like in a kind of depressive episode and no matter what, you go to their house thinking like, okay, I'm gonna just try and support them. And no matter what you say, it will be turned into a negative. Yeah. No matter what you say, well, there's this thing, or maybe you could try this, or and it's like, no, it's this like is never going to work. It's, it's a, like that SNL skit. Yes, a Debbie Downer. Yeah. Debbie Downer. It, it, it's like yeah. the left right now is a little bit the Debbie Downer character on on, on SNL, where anything that, that that could be spun into a positive, you know, doesn't end up. First of all, I mean, I've tried to do it with abortion rights, where where because that's also how I function. Um, when I Personally, when something's really difficult, I always try and just turn it into, how can I turn this into an opportunity? Or how can I turn this into a lesson? And even if I, I I won't not allow myself not to feel sad or disappointed, but with abortion rights, I've been like, okay, we can use this moment, this terrible thing that has happened where like the largest disenfranchisement of women in modern American history I'm, we can use this moment for greater access to abortion rights. We're going to use this moment to, to get more people to realize how important this right is. And I think that it's actually working. We've had more support for abortion rights than we've ever had in recent American history. It's like 85% now. So, so there are positive things, but then I get told, you're discounting the women who are going to die, or I get pushback for saying women have been disenfranchised, yeah, which I've is true, that. right? Yeah, like, yeah. and and it makes me really sad. And but I think it's actually really important to be to be willing to go against the grain right now, and to be willing to be brave. And hopefully, it, you know, again by having these conversations in public, not just yeah. in private, 
um, it becomes a sort of a permission for more people to be who they are and say what they think. It, by being so afraid to speak, by being so afraid to be truthful, it means that people, it, even within a community, um, you know, of, of activists or, or people who agree on everything, yeah. they don't feel connected because they're not really safe to reveal how they're really feeling about things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been interesting, and in, and in, especially in that conversation, because I've heard a lot of it comes from this, like I think, from an underlying fear. Yeah, fear of being canceled, fear of saying the wrong thing, being not, being called excluded. out publicly, being excluded, rejected. rejected. Right? I don't know, Jamie. What do you think? No, oh, man. I appreciate what you guys are saying. I also feel like this serves as a distraction mm. in the world. We get caught up in things. People start ringing a bell over here. And then we find ourselves in that whole world having that conversation. And I think the way that we find truth is for everyone to express themselves, um, of course, tactfully. You can't offend people in the process by saying you're this and that and that. But to honestly express themselves. Um, even people, I am one, by the way, for a record, that will always say, um, women's rights. Um, and that is never to dismiss people who um, identify um, in a category that oftentimes are overlooked and not seen. And yet, I will still say women's rights. Just like I will say Black Lives Matter, even though I know there are brown people that experience racism the same way I do. Women's lives matter. Even though there are people that can breastfeed that don't identify as women or who can have a baby that don't identify as a woman and all of the things that I understand it affects you and I'm so sorry and I want you to benefit from equality as well. But this has been a historical women's issue. So I'm gonna say that while having love for everybody. Why would I get canceled for that? Mm -hmm. Because I may be wrong. Can we I put, the, can we put, the, can we put parallel. the cancel meter up right now, by the way? Like, is there a cancel I mean, <laughs> meter you put up? And, and I think you have just made one of the most brilliant points I've ever heard. Like comparing- I'm sorry. No, 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 because no, what you just said actually is is what I was thinking. I mean, I was thinking a version of it where I was like, this is so confusing to me. Are, are we responding to the loud bells, the people on way on each side of the spectrum versus the majority of the people actually are okay with that language? I think that, because I I've been for a long time uh, because of my position in my book and just the I think importance of including men in the feminist conversation. I've been saying the abortion rights movement and the reproductive rights movement should be a genderless movement. I've been saying that, and and again got pushed back from even encouraging men to talk about abortion and talk yeah. to talk about because I've been you know I was told oh well now you're giving men power over that when it's only a woman's decision and I disagreed with that. I really thought you know we need to talk about people having abortions and families having abortions. Um, this is, you know, there, there are two people that are involved most of the time. You know, women can get pregnant on their own or people can't get pregnant on their own. Maybe it's an overcorrection. Um, and and again, I'm not saying we shouldn't say people and shouldn't include everybody. I think it's 100% yeah. true. But then to say you can't say women have been disenfranchised because you're, that to me is is nonsensical. It, it's just, it again, it makes us kind of sound well, silly. It, it, but it also creates... I love that you said, what bells are we listening to? Because I associate it almost like uh, like a Pavlovian response. I feel like we've become very conditioned by the bells of criticism mm -hmm. and the power of keyboard courage. The course correction of saying the wrong thing and having comments blow up or having um, being attacked mm -hmm. and, and, and feeling like you failed or you did something wrong or... or you're going to get canceled or you're not going to get your next job because mm -hmm. of it. Like we, it, we've, we've entered a very punitive state in social media and activism that, I, and I love what Jamie's saying, but the question is like, where do we go from here? And what I think, I think the missing ingredient is honestly love because I don't think the same, the same conversations happens when we're sitting here or at a dinner table or at a family dinner. I think it's different mm -hmm. because you look into the eyes of the person and they're a whole person and you can understand and you can see the history and where they come from and the love and you understand like, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't just said that way. They didn't just, they didn't yell at me. They said, hey, hold on, can you repeat that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen on Twitter. That doesn't happen on Instagram. It doesn't happen on Facebook. It doesn't happen on TikTok or all these other places. And also people 
are like using them, like putting other people down to lift themselves up to literally become famous mm-hmm. online. Like mm-hmm. if I can bring down Liz Plank, then I can become a yes. voice in the movement. Sure. Or if I can bring down Jamie Heath, then I'll get more likes. And I think that there are serious effects to that. So my question is like, is there a, is there a better way where we can still be at the table, have uncomfortable conversations and learn from each other without honestly this trauma response of, of, of feeling like we just put our hand out, said something that we believed in, got bit, and then yanked back and then don't make any any further comments or were suddenly afraid from yeah. that point on. We have a show called Man Enough. You wrote a book mm-hmm. called Man Enough that was born out of your desire to um, to be better as a human and as you walk as a man to then be better as a man and unpack and unlearn some things and redefine things and all of that nature. And I think a, a lot of people want to do that. But it was to identify men and young boys and how we can be better. That's the purpose of your book and of our podcast, right? And then we, and then how does it affect people? How does it affect women? How does it affect people of color? How does it patriarchy? All of this stuff. But it's always meant to how can I be better? Because I'm one half of this world or a third or however it's viewed. See, even in there in my language, I learned that I said half of the world, men and women, and I'm thinking, make sure that I don't exclude yeah. somebody else, which mm-hmm. I never want to do. Mm-hmm. But, but that's but that's also, that's the um, point, right? That's, that's amazing. Point. And the fact that you even thought that. But but I think that also because we, we I don't want to offend any heart. I'm not worried about being right or wrong. We just, you know, we just, I don't want to offend anybody. I, I hear, when I hear someone talk about that they don't belong, I get it. They don't, be, they don't know where they belong. They've been, of course yeah. I get it. I oh. understand your cry. And I don't want to dismiss it just because I'm holding on to my I, my own ideology. And all, you know, ultimately, humanity has to keep. You cannot be dissuaded by those things. You just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You keep moving forward, and you keep you know adjusting a little bit so that you don't offend hearts. You keep bringing people in, and then accept that there are going to people that are going to throw darts at us. All the great teachers of the world, all the great philosophers, all the great religious teachers the have have been throwing stones at them since the time they opened their mouth. You just got to go like, I understand people have their feelings. It's okay. I'm going to just press on. That's a I'm good gonna, point. I'm going to keep going. Right. It's like, why draw so much attention to it? And and in a way, it's also remembering that this has always been the case, right? Bell Hooks, one of our, you know, our faves. Bell Hooks was is very much about compassion and love, right? But she was seen as, she was, you know, mocked for those reasons yeah. and oh, sort yeah. of Uh, excluded from a lot of academic circles for those reasons. Even if you think about MLK and Malcolm X, like they had such different approaches and, you know, Malcolm X was was much more radical and saw what MLK was doing as being too, you know, uh, sort of bending to how white people think and what white people want, right? It's also remembering like this has always happened, you know, obviously it feels bigger because it's happening to us right now and it's, and, and it's amplified with social media, right? Like, to Jamie's point, maybe it's also about just like turn off the comments, right? Or don't read the comments. But you, you, but to that extent, though, I do feel like I have there's things I've learned. Mm-hmm. And, that's true. And this is what's interesting about feedback. Right. Is, I, feedback is right. you want to hear it. Yeah, and you want to see yeah. conversation, and, right? And so much of I mean, so much of my growth has come from pe- the pe- people like you both, who have different. Um, yeah, who, who the move, same. Who who are different, different yet and yet the same. The same. Uh, <laughs> and and some of my um, oh my god, here here's an example. I almost said blind spot. That would be ableist <laughs> language. How do I know that's ableist language? Because Liz Plank told me once. <laughs> I can't say blind spot. This is where is that not doing the same thing as one who says it's not a woman. You know, uh, don't you can't say women's rights. And even though you understand their plight and their feeling and understand it, and I understand there are blind mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. but by changing that language, there's a, there's a, mm-hmm. I can't see when I'm driving a car. Yeah. Why can't you see? Because I can't see it. Right. Uh, because there's a spot that I'm blind. Blind mm-hmm. just means can't see. Mm-hmm. There's a spot I but, can't see. Yeah. So I'm not blind. So my opinion doesn't matter on this. Uh, we should have a blind person uh, respond to this question. We would love that, that would be a great thing to do. And if you are blind and you're listening to the pod- this podcast, please let us know. Uh, but imagine, okay, imagine. So, Jamie, uh, one of the things about you is that you're. Um, I'm trying to find something like what's a thing that you like a like a like a thing that you he's do black, that, by the way. that you, you know he's black? Oh, no <laughs> I fine. mean okay let's say that let's I'm just gonna make one up let's say that you are always late okay mm-hmm. you're many things 
Yeah. But Jamie, is, you're, you oh, run up that's a racist. studio. Liz, that's racist. You're, no, you're an incredible Liz, father. That's not racist. You're incredible. You're amazing. You're, there's a... <laughs> It's only racist black. if you make it racist. Okay, but, no, no. But, okay. but, but, I, but it I was is joking. It's not. I'm joking. No, no, I joking. know you are. You but I'm saying, but, it, but a lot of people could say that. So I appreciate it. No, no, no. I'm that. only saying that because I'm imagining this is back to this conversation. He's black. And people the first thing you right. think of is that he's late. Okay. Let's right? do no, another no, one. But no, no, no. But here's <laughs> No, no, no. But I. No, boy. Let's, let's, let's go into this because that wasn't your intention. No, not at all. So let's say you're always late. You're many other things. You're an incredible musician. You're an incredible podcaster. You're an incredible parent. Um, and let's say that, uh, in, that, that the fact that you're always late turns into a saying that says, oh, that's my Jamie spot. <laughs> when, when someone's late, they say, no, that's just, my, that's just my Jamie spot. It becomes associated with who you are based on one tiny thing of what you are. Mm. And it becomes the way that everyone then refers to a negative thing. <laughs> it's like, that's so gay, right? That's so gay. Oh, it doesn't mean, uh, it, it doesn't mean it's, it's like homophobic because what I mean is it's lame. But then you're using that person's identity synonymous with a negative thing. It's not that they, the word wasn't created to identify those people. But the way it's used is not physically n not being able to see, right? Oh, it was a blind spot. It yeah, means but you're it means metaphorically, but blind people- I can't see. But again, it's using their, their identity. Like it's, I'm not using was, their identity. I'm using the word. The word blind was attributed to someone who couldn't see. The word blind yes, but now it's also used. could mean that you're blind to seeing a point. That's where I feel it gets conflated. Right. We've taken, and that's why I think this is what happens with all of these things. Right. So the word itself is not, does not belong it's both to that group literal of people. and metaphorical. But either way, it is. I can see your point um, that you that that you think it's inoffensive or it doesn't really make a difference. I think that there are other words actually though. And that journalists have been using for a long time when they report on disability rights, because there's often no people with disabilities in their newsrooms. And it's something that's been changing and I think is really positive, right? To me, where cancel culture or like calling out or whatever we call it, when it leads to something productive, like the New York Times having a disability beat and having a reporter who reports on disability, which by the way, was not a thing 12 months ago, yeah. that was a blind spot. If we wanna use the term blind spot, that was a problem. And another uh, word that was often used in and and is still being used in news stories is like we're wheelchair bound, saying they're referring to the person in the in in the story as wheelchair bound. And what I've learned from my friends with disabilities is that my wheelchair is not uh, me losing my freedom. It's it is my freedom. I'm not bound to my wheelchair. I'm a wheelchair user. I have a wheel a, a, a wheelchair. In this conversation, right here here we are, and we've landed on ableist language, which again was news to me two or three years ago, right? And uh, the thing about privilege. Is that you can't see it. Is that. You can't what? You're, I can't say the word, right? Those of us with it are unable to see it. And I would not have to know about ableist language mm -hmm. because of the very fact that I am able-bodied. I would never, I've never had to learn about it. Nobody's never, it's never entered my mind. And I remember when you said, hey, just be mindful of using, I don't even want to say this word because then I know Jamie's going to start a whole nother thing. <laughs> like being mindful of you saying that drove me crazy. What? <laughs> I don't, I see, I say she crazy all mindful. the time. She said mindful. She said be mindful I, I of it. I just told you it, if you want to use another yes. word, because again, if it's easy. Yeah. Because, some, because someone. Or like that's insane. Like they're just being mindful of the words. Now here's the thing. <laughs> but see, that's, that, Liz. <laughs> say those words all the time. No, no. I say those words. I, I I'm appreciate how sensitive we are to, yeah. oh, I don't want to offend this person. And for them, they may feel this way or someone about me being black or being yeah. divorced or being whatever it may be. Thank you for being sensitive to how we, however, mm -hmm. insane does not mean someone that's in an, uh, an asylum that is uh, uh, um, schizophrenic or, you know, whatever term they, they may be. You know, you could yeah. do that with every, every word. word. Well, and then, and, and, and this conversation is what's happening. This conversation is so much bigger than this conversation. Um, it's well, distracting. Here's, it's distracting here, here's what I get out of it. What I get out of it is Liz tells me these things two, three years ago when I'm writing my book. My first instinct was yours. Wow, what? It, what is it? it? Like ableist. And I remember going down this, I was sitting there, I was sitting in the living room with my wife and I was like, I can't release this book. I almost wanted to not release the whole thing. Aww. No, 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 no. But listen, here's why. It's because I'm like, if 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 Liz is telling me this, Liz loves me and she's kind and she's just looking out for me and she wants to make sure that this is received by the yeah. most people. What else is in here? Mm. 
there isn't a rule book. I'm going to say it. There isn't a rule. Ru- there is no rule book for white, straight, cisgendered men of all the things that we can and can't say. There isn't. How do we learn about it? By being open to discourse, mm-hmm. by being willing to have uncomfortable conversations, Correct. and by saying the wrong thing and being open to feedback. I really believe we have to learn how to have this conversation because not everybody is going to be as loving and kind as the three of us here and walk us through why that could be harmful or why that could be hurtful. And there's a lot of pain that exists in the world. There's a reason why oppressed groups are, are right. fucking angry yes, right now. That's right? the thing. And, and, and the, question, the question is how do, we, how, do we call, how do we call people in? How do we, how do we bring people to this table? Right? How do we bring on differing points of view and separate the the maybe sometimes the person from what they're saying? Mm-hmm. Because we're whole people. Yeah. And I'm not discouraged by it. I actually feel encouraged by it. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like this pendulum is, is swinging so far over here, a place we don't want it to, to stay. But oftentimes that has to happen so that things can become balanced, mm-hmm. right? You shake up the other side. Similarly, like we always just talking about this recently. The the divorce rate is way up. <clears throat> compared to what it was 50 years ago, 100 years ago. I, I, I don't uh, stand, I do not believe that divorce is the best answer. However, here's one of the um, things that why we have divorce. Women are finally now not taking shit from men. <laughs> Women are no longer being abused. They won't stay in a relationship simply because they didn't have, their voice wasn't heard. So what you see is an uprise in divorce, which is, I'm not for, but if it's a result of women no longer staying silent and now, having new relationships based on equality versus inequality. So while I'm not for divorce and this pendulum is swinging, then that's a sign that women are no longer staying silent. And eventually we will have marriages more balanced with inequality and then they will last longer. And I, and I agree with you. I, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the divide in our country. And that's the thing that hurts me. Because I think that we are, we're not seeing each other as whole human beings. We're not, we're not thinking... We're not thinking about what, what, what Jesus teaches in the Bible. It's not just love thy neighbor. It's like, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. We're not thinking about what Baha'u'llah says, breathe not the sins of others so long as thou art thyself a sinner. It's like, are we looking at ourselves and thinking about our own faults as much as we're thinking about everybody else's? Or are we just constantly just on the attack to make sure we're correcting anything anybody else says if they're not perfect and expecting everybody to be perfect? Are you doing perfect? that? Am I personally doing that? Yeah. I'm not. No, you're not. I don't I'm see this doing that. Mm-hmm. So the ones that are doing that, yeah. you just keep doing and demonstrating the way that you think it can be done by offering love, having the conversation, yeah. holding space. When someone says something that contradicts what you think you may feel, we process it in the way we do. And that's what ultimately changes community. And then you just keep talking about masculinity and how to undefine it. And you keep talking about feminism. And if you offend someone in the process, then you you know say, sorry, to fellow, that's not what I'm... Did I just speak English there? Sorry, I offended you. That was my blind spot. <laughs> Whatever you do, yeah, you yeah. say that was my you know, blind spot. We, we, you just or thank you for your opinion. Thank you, of course, like, <laughs> and I will reflect on it. And those people that do go by it's themselves a, yeah. and and privately think one thing and publicly do another thing, I get it. You're working it out. You're not really prepared mm-hmm. to stand behind what you say publicly, so you can say this pri- privately. But if I'm challenged publicly, oh, I got to now mm-hmm. give data that supports why I said that. And I'm not well versed enough to say it, so I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just, you know, I'm, this is just how it goes. This is the process of humanity. And if you ex- if you understand how humanity humanity grows, then we're less yeah. thrown off balance by right. it as it it's doing it. Um, yeah. You just keep doing you. Yeah, and in a way, you know, we're 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 demanding that people accept themselves and and show up authentically. And part of that is also then accepting that you're not always going to be liked, and that there are people who are always going to disagree. Yeah, and that the you know, that's also the cost of like speaking out and and not the cost, but the inevitable yeah. kind of result. And and speak up. Sorry, sorry. So now my, my, my brain's going. This whole idea about echo chambers. Mm-hmm. And are we, does one make new audience or are you just preaching to the choir? Well, damn it. You know how many people need to be preached? The choir needs to be reminded that where they stand and how they feel is okay. If people's goal is to always continue to go outside your community, when your community are the ones that are going to do the work anyways, so you pump them up, you let them feel seen and heard so that they can publicly say the same things that they are saying privately. The people that, if, so if we, that's all we are doing is slowly bringing people into the conversation that they feel more confident 
to then live it in their lives, that is more valuable than just grabbing more people. The echo chamber is what we need. Damn it, if I would have had that throughout my life and someone tell me I mattered, tell me I matter. Mm -hmm. Let's tell the women out there that are listening to us that they matter, their voices matter, and we champion them as men. Let's tell them, I don't care about telling somebody else. Let's tell men that actually say, I want to be more like Justin. Yes, let me do that so that you don't be dissuaded in the world. Mm -hmm. That's going to do more than just talk to a bunch of people who are just coming in out one ear and out, in one ear out the other. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't want to grow, of course you do, but echo chamber, I think we use in a negative connotation and it's actually good. Mm -hmm. That's how people win is yeah. by being reinforced. Yeah. I think that so much of what we're seeing is just a projection, the projection mm -hmm. of wanting to be good and be on the right yes. side of history and yeah. no, see, no, look, I'm good. I, yeah. I'm doing good and I'm being of service and I'm an, I'm an activist and I'm fighting for the, you know, and it's like, and it becomes unfortunately not about the movement, but about oh, them. Sure. And yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm and, still okay with that. And that's fine. I'm okay yeah. with that. Here's here's yeah. my metaphor. I've told you forever about taking a hammer and a chisel at whatever it is that you're trying to tear down. Um, in the case that I most use it in is is in regards to racism, right? But sexism, um, your any anything that you want to take down. You walk through life, you take your chisel, you take your hammer, and every day it's like not a sexy thing. No one notices it really. You just hammer away at this thing that's going to take years and years and years down. Now, there are some people that will be focused on it, and there'll be other people that just want to take a picture with their hammer and chisel that'll just be in the shot. I don't care. Be in the shot. Maybe you're so, it's, it's better than you not, because just being around the people with hammer and chisels eventually will rub off. You're in those conversations. So... Yes, the performative stuff is not great, but I'd rather have you perform and want to be seen as someone that cares about it than rather not give a shit at all. Please send us your photos of your hammer and chisel. That's uh, right. We'll be reposting uh, I won't judge how you're using uh, it. Just, on the just man Instagram, just send us a <laughs> selfie of you with your chisel. You guys are amazing. Uh, this is the best doing this with you both. Because um, I get so, I feel like every time I say something, I got this uh, I don't know. Do I smile on this you, show? Yeah. You brought the heat today, Jamie. Jeez, I feel like I'm the heat. Yeah. Hold on. But, on it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here. You deserve the. You deserve oh, the. Oh, yes. Here. Here we go. What is it? This is. Uh, That's me. So funny. Right. This is Jamie when he was 18 or 17 I was, years old. No, no, 16. I was 16. Yeah. He was 16 years old. 16 years old. And I had this Look life size. Shorts. I had this life size cutout of Jamie uh, made for his. Sweet. His last birthday. What were you, 52 or something? How old were you? What would you say to your 16-year-old self today, well, Jamie? Look at that. You've shrunk a little since you were 16. <laughs> it's all right. That's what 50 years will do. Uh, look at those legs, by the way. Those some, those some nice yeah. damn legs. For us. So uh, performer of the week goes to Jamie Heath. Liz, I hope that the next episode, uh, that can be behind you. <laughs> And then we'll just move Jamie around. Maybe Great. we'll just move Jamie around all season. I like that. Let's let's do this next season um, with even more audacity. Yes. Um, more freedom. Yeah. Um, we've we've had this first year to really learn how we want to do it together. Mm -hmm. But it's a pleasure and a joy to do it yeah. with both of you because I think we are making a difference, if to none other than to my son, mm -hmm. and to my nephews, and to my nieces, and to their children, and maybe some ones in your life, if none other. Because it starts at home, starts in our own family, and uh, so, anyways, that's all to say that I love the, I love you both. Uh, we love you, and this season, yeah, well, let's 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 go there. Yeah. Let's have the conversation. That's no, that's the only reason to do this show, mm -hmm. is to have these conversations and to yeah. learn and to grow and to show that, like, all right, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world if you're corrected or you feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm and maybe your idea wasn't the best and mm -hmm. you learned something live, that is life. Yeah. I mean, that's marriage, mm -hmm. that's, that's friendship. I think it one is. of the reasons that we're so close, Jamie and I, is because there's always space for that feedback. Yeah. You know? And I think in this last year, we've gotten yeah. close and you feel that. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I would love to see yeah. happen more in the world. I believe it is happening. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see it happen in, in social spaces yeah. online. Um, and just remember that we're all in this together. We're just gonna be. We're just gonna, we're just gonna be, be ourselves. Open and, That's right. And we will be ourselves, and we will speak, uh, and and we will be fully, authentically who we are. Yeah. And I think we we already were, but we're gonna do it more. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> uh, I really hope that you got what you wanted. Uh, to all of you who told us you wanted more of the three of us, um, this was fun. Yeah, I... um, this was great. 
I just want to encourage everyone listening, uh, if you liked this conversation, to uh, Google Loretta J. Ross. I watched her uh, her TED Talk last night. I've been a fan of hers. In fact, Emily quoted her when she was, when she was in the show mm-hmm. a year and pl- change ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and her TED Talk is called Don't Call People Out, Call Them In. Mm-hmm. She's incredible. Uh, and I, I just highly recommend you listen to that. It's, uh, it's It was a life-changing uh conversation and i'm hoping that she comes on the yeah. podcast this year we're working to get her on um and uh if you like this show and you want to join us for season two where do they find us jamie manenough.com is one um spotify uh-huh. apple um stitcher um and you know we're doing you 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 know YouTube, what's crazy you know youtube what's, you know what's amazing is that we you know people are listening to our show because jamie's getting recognized out on the street in the streets he was out on way. he was out on burbank he was in burbank a guy a guy a man oh. walks by hey man love your stuff you're doing no great way. good stuff and jamie jamie was like huh so like, yeah your podcast man you're doing great you're doing so he's uh I you mean, like forget you have a podcast oh, you're like you know you're like yeah. okay i'm friends with justin Okay, he's, uh, I know, what, I know so, what that's like. So we are, we're clearly, we're reaching men, which yes. is awesome. Yeah. We are. And, uh, and we appreciate you so much. So please join us. It's going to be a great season. We're going we're gonna to be authentically ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we hope that you also be can be yeah. authentically yourself. Yeah. Stay in the room, have uncomfortable conversations. And we are all in this together. Uh, I'm Justin Baldoni. I'm Liz Plank. I'm Jamie Heath. And this is Man Enough.